Hey, what's up guys? Sick Designs here and uh, today I'm going to teach you how to do this. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is uh, obviously get Cinema 4D opened up. So I'll go ahead and wait for that to load up. Okay, and the first thing I always like to do is uh, go up here to Render Settings uh, by clicking this tab. And this is in Cinema 4D R13, uh, the latest version as of today. And I always do this in HD, so that's uh, 1280 by 720. Okay, and since this will be considered an animation, we're going to want to go to frame range, frame range and click all frames. <clears throat> then click on the Save tab, and we're going to go down to where you see Format. We're going to change that to AVI Movie. And Anti-Aliasing, uh, we're going to change the this to Best, and Max Level at 8x8. Now, if you do have a faster computer, you can choose to do 16x16. 16 16. It just looks a little bit better, but it's really not necessary because 8x8 looks plenty, uh, plenty good. So once you get your render settings set up, uh, you're ready to move on. Uh, okay, so the first step we want to do in, uh, for this effect is uh, creating a floor. Uh, so you're just going to do that, select floor. Okay, and the next thing we want to do this floor is right click, go to simulation tags, and go to rigid body. Okay, and basically what this is doing is making this floor like a physical object. So when something collides with it or hits it, it'll interact with it, not just go straight through the floor. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add a texture to this floor. Um, I've actually got a wood texture uh, here that I found on uh, Google Images. And I'm just going to uh, take this from the desktop, drag it on there. And uh, now we've got a wooden like uh, floor. And if we go to Render Preview, you can uh, see that there. Okay, so once you've got your textured floor, whatever you want that to be, um, Oh, I forgot to mention, if you'd like to make your own texture, in case you didn't know, you just double click in this box down here, and you can actually add in reflections and whatever color you want. Uh, you, yeah, you can play around with that to whatever you want, and whenever you're done with your uh, material down here that you created, you just take it and drag it onto here. And then there you go, it'll apply it to that uh, whatever object you want to put some material on. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, so next thing we're going to do is go up here to the cube icon, and we're going to add a cube, and then you'll get this little box here. And um, what we're going to want to do next is um, actually uh, texturize this cube as well. And um, so yeah, just go down here, create an, uh, another material, and we'll, we'll give this some uh, reflection here. Uh, I'll make it a, I guess, sort of a lime green cube. Just make sure that you change the colors for both reflection and the color tab if you're wanting to use reflection because obviously it's going to look kind of uh, weird if you don't. So once we have that, uh, then we can take this and drag it onto the cube or just drag it up there like I showed before. And if we preview that, you can obviously see we're starting to get something. It still doesn't look that great, but it's uh, definitely a start. Um, I kind of want to add some reflection to this wooden floor. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and load this texture of the floor down here on reflection. So that it does have some reflection to it. As you can see there, it added that little uh, nice reflection to the floor. Okay, and uh, the next thing we're going to do is, is we're going to add some lighting into it. Um, you can either do uh, just regular light, which is uh, doesn't light up near as much as some of the other options. I personally like to use um, area light because it lights up a larger area. And we'll just pull this over a little bit. And then there you go, and we'll preview that. And uh, you can already start to see a little bit of a difference there. Um, and if you want this to cast a shadow, um, you really all you got to do is select the light, go over to Shadow, and go to Shadow Map Soft. And then if we preview that, see so you've got a nice little shadow going on there. Um, So 
see how that looks. Alright, so it's not the best, but we'll get there. Um, basically, the next thing we're going to have to do is is um, actually split this cube up to be broken down. Um, so what you're going to want to do is select the cube. I'm freezing up, so give me a second. Alright, select it and use this plugin called Throwsy. Put that in the description for you to download. Uh, you just uh, put it in your plugin folder in Cinema 4D. I'm not going to cover that, but there is plenty of tutorials out there that teach you how to do that. And then here you want to select how many pieces you want to break this up into. I'm just going to do eight, which is very simple. And I'm just going to hit break now. And this program automatically, or this plugin, automatically does it for you. And then you're just going to want to right click on the cube and make it a rigid body. I don't know if I did that or not already, but just in case. And then whenever you hit the play button down here, uh, you can see the cube actually breaks apart. And if we get a render preview, that's what it's going to look like. Alright, so if you notice, I'm getting this kind of weird looking line here, and I'm not too crazy about that. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take another floor and got it selected. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to rotate it and try to get this around 90 degrees. It's all right if it's not exact. And I'm going to put this in the background. Um, and then I'm going to go down here to my texture tab and double click, or actually go to create and then go to shader. And I don't know how you pronounce that. I think it's new key, new kai or something. Uh, double click on it. And here you can change the color to whatever you want. I personally like it just white. I'm going to drag this onto the floor I just created. And let's preview that. And uh, there you go. It kind of uh, gets rid of that funky look we had going on there. Um, once again. Uh, so yeah, this is what we got going on. This is a uh, shadows you see here. And this is uh, the reflection on the uh, on the ground. And uh, once more. So, as you can see there, if we play this, what we got, it breaking into pieces, and this is what it looks like. So, now that we've got that, uh, what we can do is, is uh, take this cube and we can raise it up. So it's out of the picture, and then when we play it, it falls into the picture and breaks apart. And if you want to adjust the, the, uh, you know, the friction of it, as you can see here, whenever it collides, it slides quite a bit. We can actually go into the Dynamics Body tab when we've got our cube selected, and we'll scroll down to where we see Collision, and we'll change the friction to say around. 85% which should limit the sliding around quite a bit. Uh, the higher the number this number is um, in the friction area, uh, the less it's going to slide and the lower obviously the more it's going to slide. And in the bounce uh, here, the higher this number is, uh, the more it's going to bounce and the lower the less it's going to bounce. So if I put like 20% bounce, it's not going to bounce that much and since I changed the friction, it shouldn't uh, slide as much as you can see there but it did not break apart as much as I would like so I'm gonna change the bounce to around 35 percent and it should help it break apart and I'm freezing up here at the moment <laughs> and so there you go um, now you notice the outside is green, but whenever it breaks apart, you got the insides that are just um, this plain white color, or I guess light gray. Now if you don't want that, you're going to have to go in here and uh, on your pieces, there's eight of them. As you can see here, this uh, noted by here, you can see that the outside is green. This would be your inside colors. So if you want to change that, you just create a new... Um, new texture, 
say I want to make it black and then you just uh, you just drag this on each piece <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna do and then once you get it dragged on each piece you'll notice when it breaks apart that uh, the insides of it are also colored as well so when it breaks kind of got a black uh, hint to it um, so not that uh, necessarily that light gray as you can see here and we'll preview it once again and uh, there you go so that's pretty much what we got so far slide this back a little bit it looks better and you can see the shadows being casted here so it looks quite nice um, there's a lot more you can do with this but uh, this basically covers everything I've demonstrated um, so yeah that's uh that's pretty much it guys so